In this introductory video, I will discuss how to make a mount socket out of a brass hex head bolt. A mount socket is used to mount artwork to either the wall or the deck, as in the case of this African mask. The mount is secured into the socket using set screws. I use a screwdriver style ball end hex wrench. I cover the shaft with Teflon heat shrink, just on the off chance we touch the object with the screwdriver. To install the socket, I tighten a set screw against one of the flats on a hex head wrench and use it as an installation tool. The socket is screwed into a pre-drilled hole. The hole should be sized so that the socket goes in easily but firmly. This style mount socket was originally developed by the mount makers at the Getty to secure artwork to walls during earthquakes. Making a mount socket is a good first time project in learning how to use a metal lathe. Here's an excerpt from the classic film, How to Run a Lathe, by the South Bend Lathe Company. Nothing's really changed since 1940. Let us take advantage of this opportunity to learn what we can about the care and operation of a lathe. The young man with loose, dangling sleeves and flowing tie has no place in the shop. Tie should be removed and sleeves should be rolled up. The lathe has four basic parts. There is the bed, which is the foundation upon which the lathe is built. The three inverted V's and the flat surface are called the bedways. They are used to align the important units of the lathe with extreme accuracy. The headstock is mounted on the left end of the lathe bed. The headstock transmits the power which rotates the work, the metal or other material which will be formed to size and shape by machining in the lathe. At the other end, the right end of the bed and sliding on the bedways, is the tailstock. The tailstock serves as a support for the right end of the work, or it may be used for mounting tools. The carriage is also mounted and travels on the bedways. It has an apron equipped with various controls, a saddle which spans the bedways, a compound rest, and a tool post. The tool post is used to clamp the cutting tool to the top of the compound rest. It is designed to hold the tool securely when cutting various kinds of metal. Perfect alignment of the headstock, tailstock, and carriage is maintained by the V-ways of the lathe bed. The precision of this alignment is of great importance to the production of accurate work. I firmly secure the bolt into the six jaw chuck. Using a center drill, I make a pilot hole into the bolt. Before starting the lathe, I always rotate the chuck by hand to make sure it's not hitting against anything. I drill a hole through the bolt using a twist drill one size larger than the rod that I'm going to be inserting into the socket. I use a pecking motion when I'm drilling to break the chips. I clear the chips from the drill using a brush soaked in cutting fluid. The red number on the digital readout indicates that the lathe is running at about 912 RPM, which is a good conservative speed for this operation. I would highly recommend changing the lantern style tool post shown in the South Bend video to a modern quick change post with carbide inserts. 
As a beginner, it is much easier to replace carbide inserts when they become dull than it is to regrind tools. Make sure that the tool is firmly secured into the tool holder using the set screws. The knurled nut and hex nut are used to adjust the height of the cutter. The tool holder is held securely onto the tool post with a cam lock. I am exchanging the drill chuck for the center. I use the center to set the height of the cutting tool. The height of the cutting tool is adjusted to match the exact center of the part. This is called a facing cut. I use the large hand wheel to move the carriage about 30 thousandths of an inch towards the part for each cut. This is called a turning cut. right hand is moving the cross slide about 30 thousandths of an inch for each cut. 10 thousandths, 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths. After turning and facing, the part has a razor sharp edge. I remove this edge by chamfering it with the side of the cutter. The part is now ready for drilling and tapping for the set screws. This is a center finder. I first make a pilot hole with a center drill. I then drill the properly sized hole for the tap that I'm using. With the drill press set at its lowest possible speed, I hold the bottom of the power tapper to turn the tap into the part. I then hold the top of the power tapper to reverse the rotation of the tap. I prefer to use spiral taps when I'm using the push-pull power tapper. If you don't properly abrade and activate the surface, the coating will not adhere properly. After drilling and tapping the part, I deburr it using a nylon mesh abrasive wheel. If water beads on the part, it is not ready to paint. This is called a low energy surface. If you don't have a sandblaster, the best way to clean and activate the surface of the part is to use a nylon mesh pad and a common 
bathroom cleaner like Ajax or Comet. This will remove any hydrocarbons on the surface of the part and activate it, making it a high energy surface. Scrub the part until water will not beat on it. The surface of the part will change from a high energy surface to a low energy surface after about an hour. After about an hour, hydrocarbon molecules in the air will start to recoat the surface, changing it back to a low energy surface. So it is best to dry the part off with a heat gun and paint it within an hour. This is called a wetting test. Water should not beat on the surface. The surface should just be smooth and wet, indicating that it is a high energy surface ready for coating. I can burnish the paint with my thumbnail, but it's not coming off. The part is now ready for the finished paint color.